Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another video from my channel Interactive Education for the best education possible from the student to the student for a better experience. And today we're going to start a very very important chapter that is the second chapter. Uh, so we're going to start the second term syllabus for the class 10 students for biology and the first chapter in the second semester is a reproduction in organisms. Reproduction in organisms, or the term used actually is how do organisms reproduce? Now, this is a very important chapter in biology and biological study. Let's see how. Now, let's try to recall the first chapter of biology in our portion this year. That was the life processes. Now, we know in life processes, we learned some very fundamental things. We learned about the life processes of the human body. We learned what were the essential life processes of the human body and how they went along, etc., etc. We also learned why they were fundamental and we looked at various life processes such as nutrition, such as nutrition. We looked at respiration. We looked at excretion. We looked at transportation and after a point in a separate chapter, we also looked at control and coordination. Control and coordination. So we looked at these various topics. We looked at what they were, what their meaning was and why they were important. We looked at these topics. And when I was teaching this chapter, I remember that I had said something really important about reproduction. And I had said that all the reproduction is very, very important as well. Reproduction also carries its importance, I said, as I said, that reproduction is also an essential life process, although, however, reproduction is not a life process. It's not a life process. However, it is an essential biological process it is not a life process. Why? I clearly said this earlier. Reproduction is essential for the sustenance of a species. So it is essential for the sustenance of a species or group or group of organisms or a particular group of organisms it is very very important for their sustenance and their uh, existence however it is not essential for maintaining life So, you don't actually reproduce to maintain the life of an individual. No, it does not. It does not maintain the life of an individual. However, it maintains and sustains the species or group of organisms. That is why we don't call respiration, sorry, we don't call reproduction a life process. This is because it is not essential for the sustenance of the life of an individual, but very important not for life of an individual, but for the existence of the species or group of organisms. I hope that's clear to each and every one. Now let's move on to a more important and broader term. That is, what do we actually mean? What's wrong with my stylus today? 
what do we actually mean by the term reproduction? What is the definition of the term reproduction? Let's have a look at that. Basically, reproduction refers to the process to the process by which organisms produce by which organisms produce offsprings or other organisms or other organisms of the same kind of the same kind so reproduction basically is the process of multiplication how organisms produce organisms of the same kind, how organisms are produced, how offsprings are produced, all this it comes under reproduction. So reproduction is basically the process by which organisms produce offsprings or other organisms of the same kind, right? And we know the reason why to sustain life and sustain not life individually, but sustain life of a species or of a group of organisms. So that is what we call reproduction. Very, very important. All right. Oh, that's clear. Now, after reproduction, let us look at its advantages or advantages of reproduction. Now, we know some basic advantages. The first advantage of reproduction is uh, maintains maintains a species now we've discussed this above that it maintains a species it maintains a group of organisms it maintains their existence it helps them survive so it maintains a species second thing it brings about it brings about variation but however this variation term is mainly prevalent only in sexual reproduction. If you see that this variation only usually occurs in sexual reproduction about which we will study a bit further on. But it helps up to bring about a variation. So if there is one parent and it gives birth to one offspring, if it is done by sexual reproduction, then if P has supposed some characteristic A, then O may have a characteristic of modified A. That is, A may not be the same, A may be a slightly different form, right? So, for example, if you have brown color hair, if the parent has brown color hair, parent 1, and parent 2 has black colored hair, now we know that in sexual reproduction, two parents are involved. Now we know that in sexual reproduction, two parents are involved, right? So if one parent has black hair, another parent has brown hair, they together give a child with modified A. A is, in this case, is hair color. So here he may have blackish brown hair. Blackish brown hair. So see, there is a variation. It is not directly from any one of the parents, it is slightly different. So the first parent has black hair, second parent has brown hair, so the child will have blackish brown hair. So that is what we call variation. So it helps, especially sexual reproduction helps in bringing about a variation, right? There is a variation in the way uh, organisms, right? They exist. Number three, it helps in evolution so if you see the process of evolution is largely facilitated by the process of reproduction reproduction assists in one way in evolution so if there is reproduction obviously variation comes about and if variation comes about we know that variation is one of the basic things for evolution why because if there is variation in organisms, that variation is ultimately going into the lifeline or the genetics of the organism. It goes 
Finally, this variation takes the form of, it goes into the genetics of the species and ultimately it becomes a part of the characteristic. Becomes a part of the characteristic of the organism. Ultimately, you will see it will become a part of the characteristics of the organism. You will see that it becomes a characteristic of the organism, right? So, these are some three main important advantages of reproduction, right? That is why reproduction should be carried out. So, if you get a question, importance of reproduction, you will first define reproduction and give a few of its advantages. That will give you a perfect, complete answer. Right. So with this, let's conclude this video on an introduction to reproduction. We introduced reproduction in this video and I also started off with reproduction organisms. Thank you for joining me today. In the next video, we will be discussing the, sec uh, the importance of the difference between sexual and asexual reproduction and how they are different. So we'll be looking at that in the next video. Thank you very much for joining me today. Goodbye. Stay healthy, stay smart and keep studying. Do Look forward to the next video and do look it up if it has already arrived. Thank you very much. Goodbye.